Namaste, everyone. Welcome to the Charvak Podcast. This is your host, Kushal Nehra. All right. Today's t- t- podcast is titled Making Sense Out of the Chaos in Pakistan. And to make sense out of it with us is Dr. Mohammed Takit. Dr. Saab, podcast for coming to the podcast. Thank you, Kushal. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. So, so Dr. Taki, this is your first time on the Charvak podcast. So my request to you is for the benefit of our, my viewers and listeners, could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure, certainly. Um, my name is uh, Muhammad Taki. Um, I'm a medical doctor by profession, uh, but I've had a long association with the uh, progressive uh, leftist uh, and Pashtun nationalist politics uh, in Pakistan. um almost going back to my childhood or uh, early adolescent uh, years uh, and i'm a columnist uh, as well i used to write for daily times pakistan uh, a national daily and then uh, currently i'm writing for the wire uh, india one of the uh, <clears throat> leading indian portals um and i uh, watch uh, happenings in pakistan uh, even though i'm based uh, in florida currently All right awesome so dr taki as i was telling you offline i i wanted to structure our chat where maybe we get back into the history of pakistani politics so i'm going to be starting in a way that i'll request you to begin with let's let's explain the political landscape of pakistan from a historical perspective obviously when i'm saying from a historical perspective right now because there is uh, imran khan oh, as the prime minister or the pakistani tehreekin sab but maybe what was the political history of pakistan who are the main players and who is uh, what is pakistani uh, pakistan tehreek e insaf and how does yeah. it come in and what it does to the uh, political landscape of pakistan maybe we can start there sure um so so uh, just uh, as of today what is happening uh, right now is uh, a constitutional uh, chaos in pakistan and uh, unfortunately uh, this is our 75th year uh, after uh, independence and so is india's uh, but up until almost halfway through uh, we did not really have a constitution uh, the current constitution of uh, uh, pakistan was formulated in 1973 uh, we did have a couple of uh, different constitutions formulated uh, before that uh, 1956 and uh, <clears throat> and then one uh, another one again um and in con- contrast uh, india uh, hit the ground running with the constitution making um so one of the fundamentals is that we have had a, a chaotic relationship uh, with constitutionalism to begin with um uh, and one of the key players uh, in our uh, polity has been uh, the pakistani military establishment uh, mm-hmm. one of the most uh, continuous uh an institutionalized entity since partition uh, actually which goes all the way back to the british indian army of which the uh, indian army and pakistani armies uh, were the uh, sibling offspring um the the continuity was there and uh, the military establishment um, and along with them a civilian bureaucracy that uh, exercised tremendous control uh, over the country um, and as most of the listeners probably Uh, would know that we faced uh, three uh, very lengthy uh, martial law regimes and other than those three regimes which total about 30 years or so uh, between them uh, we have had uh, uh, experiments in controlled democracy or semi functional uh, democracy um, if you f- uh, fast forward to uh, 2000 uh seven uh, there was a, a, a dictatorship in place uh, general parvez musharraf uh, who was uh, quite uh, uh, well known in india uh, as well uh, uh, was at the helm at the mo- at the time uh, he went after the pakistani judiciary in a in a way uh, which really rubbed everyone the wrong way and there was a uh, movement against him uh, uh, the chief justice of pakistan at that time he bucked Uh, musharraf's diktat and uh, the lawyers and political parties joined him eventually that led to the end of musharraf uh, regime uh, towards the end of 2007 um, and new elections were declared and in 2008 february uh, a democratic setup was ushered in uh, which was led by pakistan people's party in a coalition government uh, this is the same party that uh, zulfikar ali bhutto and benazir bhutto uh, were the leaders of uh, and after uh, benazir's uh, assassination 
her uh, widower uh, Asif Ali Zardari led the party. Uh, and in the opposition uh, was uh, the right of center uh, Pakistan Muslim League, uh, Nawaz Sharif group. Uh, those were the two uh, entities which had also been at the helm back in the 1990s, taking turns with each other. Uh, from 2008 to 2013, we had a, a fairly continuous uh, um, democratic dispensation in the front, but uh, army continued to control the power levers all along. In 2013, um, uh, there was a, a change of the Democratic Guard and uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif uh, <laughs> took over for the third time. But in the process, what was happening was uh, that the Pakistan army was also siring a third uh, entity. Uh, it, it had uh, misgivings about uh, the traditional political parties, both the Pakistan People's Party and uh, the Muslim League. And it wanted to have uh, uh, what the army uh, in its mind thought a more patriotic and more pliant uh, political entity as a front. And in 2013 elections, Pakistan Tariq and Saf for the first time made uh, some inroads. Uh, prior to that, in 2002 election, uh, Pakistan Tariq and Saf, which was founded by the uh, cricketer turned um, philanthropist turned politician Imran Khan. Uh, uh, it had gained only one seat, uh, his own seat in 2002 election. Uh, 2008 elections were boycotted by uh, Tariq and Saf. And in um, 2013 elections, it gained uh, some, some three dozen uh, seats or so. Uh, with tremendous backing from uh, the Pakistan army organizational support, uh, which had started almost in 2011. And at that time, uh, Imran Khan, uh, uh, refused to accept the election results uh, and then uh, periodically staged uh, various protests uh, egged on by the, uh, uh, I don't use the term military and I call it army because even though military includes uh, uh, Air Force and Navy in Pakistani politics, uh, uh, the uh, army caused the shots, not the other two services. So uh, I keep using the word army um, interchangeably with military here. Uh, and uh, come 2016, uh, uh, 17, thereabouts, uh, again, Imran Khan was uh, on the street. Uh, he had uh, a, a couple of uh, clerics uh, supporting him in terms of what he called dharnas. Um, uh, in about 2017, if I recall correctly, there was, uh, there was a, a, a leak of uh, secret documents called uh, <clears throat> Panama Papers in which various different uh, uh, financial uh, entities uh, were disclosed and uh, people from uh, various uh, parts of the world, their names were included in that. That was sort of a, a, a political windfall for uh, Imran Khan and uh, the army. Uh, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's uh, family names were included even though his name was not in those papers. But uh, as the old uh, Hindi Urdu saying goes, Billi ke bhagon chinka tuta. Uh, they really uh, uh, had had uh, unforeseen uh, <coughs> a boon, and they went to town with that. Uh, and in the process, uh, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif was disqualified by the judiciary on a very, very flimsy char charge, not even related to those uh, Panama Papers in which he was not named to begin with. Uh, and uh, uh, he was dismissed from prime, prime ministership, uh, even though uh, his party went on to co complete and the assemblies completed the term in 2018. But July 2018 is uh, when the uh, army actually um, uh, performed uh, one of the worst election heists in Pakistan, uh, Pakistan's history. They essentially stole the election on Imran Khan's behalf. And ushered in what uh, many of us have called a hybrid regime, um, a sort of uh, a, a Potemkin uh, democracy, as I call it, where there is a civilian facade uh, and the army uh, is actually an uh, equal partner or the superior partner uh, in that relationship. And uh, what happened afterwards was that con contrary to their uh, thought process, uh, the uh, government was quite dysfunctional. Uh, economy uh, started uh, uh, faltering. Uh, uh, Pakistani rupee, Pakistani uh, uh, trade to uh, GDP ratio, and then eventually the GDP itself, it sagged. Uh, there were governance issues. 
And what happened was uh, that uh, Imran Khan started taking flack from general population, but uh, the biggest issue was that the, uh, the common population and the political leadership in the opposition, they started pointing a finger of blame at what they call the selectors and then started to name uh, uh, General uh, uh, Kamar Javed Bajwa, uh, who's the uh, incumbent uh, chief of army staff, and the uh, director general, uh, the then director general I, uh, ISI, Inter Services uh, Intelligence Agency, General Faz Hamid, uh, for actually uh, bringing a very inept uh, person and uh, dispensation to power. When the army started feeling heat, uh, especially uh, from the Punjab province, which is also the home province of uh, Mian Nawaz Sharif, uh, and it is also the army's uh, biggest catchment area and recruitment grounds, uh, it, it uh, got worried about its image, not about the reality, but about the image, which has been an issue with our army for a very, very long time. Uh, things could be bad, but if they are not perceived to be bad, they might be okay with it. Uh, but this time around, since they were being directly challenged uh, uh, on their home turf, uh, they they started uh, thinking about actually ditching that project. Um, last fall, around October or so, uh, they really did uh, get an opportunity, or Imran Khan uh, sort of shot himself in the foot. He, uh, he had a very cordial relationship with the military establishment, but uh, he insisted on picking his own uh, ISI chief, uh, whereas the army wanted uh, General Faz Hamid rotated out of the uh, ISI uh, to go and uh, command a corps or do anything else, whatever their professional responsibilities are. But Imran insisted on retaining him and did so quite uh, obstinately and quite publicly. What happened then was uh, that it uh, this feud sort of uh, broke out uh, into the open and uh, army uh, refused to uh, oblige Imran. Uh, they wanted, uh, even though it is uh, inter-services uh, <clears throat> intelligence agency, which theoretically could include uh, Air Force or uh, uh, Navy uh, person as in charge or even a civilian one, because in, in theory it is under the Prime Minister, uh, the convention has been that uh, it is headed by an army man, uh, except once uh, where a retired army chief, uh, a retired army general was appointed as its uh, director back in 1988-89 by Benazir Bhutto. Uh, there's one, probably the only exception. So army uh, insisted that uh, if it is going to be their man, it has to be their choice. Um, and that's when uh, things started uh, really uh, getting bad. Um, army uh, sort of signaled that they're going to stay neutral uh, in the political process from there on out. Uh, now they had they had uh, propped up, uh, brought in and propped up Imran Khan for three and a half years. Uh, they have managed uh, the media for him, they had managed the uh, judiciary for him, they had managed uh, the uh, opposition parties for him. Uh, now left uh, to fend for himself, uh, he, he was not doing very well and the opposition parties were um, gradually getting their ducks in a row and uh, decided to bring about a no confidence motion against him. Because Imran uh, and his party had a plurality in the parliament but not a simple uh, majority. And they were ruling with the help of a couple of coalition partners. Um, and then they had a bunch of uh, their own MPs who were disgruntled with them. So a few weeks ago, the opposition finally brought about a no confidence move. Uh, and uh, they did have the numbers and some of uh, Imran Khan's own uh, uh, partisans. Uh, they very publicly parted ways with him and uh, said that they are going to side with the opposition and vote against him. Now, faced with this kind of imminent de defeat, uh, what he did on Sunday uh, was that he used his uh, speaker and deputy speaker, his his own partisans and uh, very much his minions, uh, to actually stonewall uh, the voting on uh, no confidence move, even though the resolution uh, had been moved a week prior uh, and was set for uh, voting that day and invoked a very vague clause of the Constitution, Article 5, which basically says that every citizen of Pakistan will be loyal to the state. And uh, and then they spun uh, a huge uh, conspiracy theory that uh, the United States was uh, threatening Imran Khan, and somehow the opposition was in cahoots with the United States. And therefore, this uh, um, no confidence move was a malicious uh, uh, one with uh, Malafide intentions and could not be voted upon, uh, and uh, they stopped the opposition from 
uh, voting on it. Thereafter, immediately, uh, Imran Khan sent an advice to the prime minister, again, one of his uh, minions, uh, not the prime minister, the president, Arif Alvi, who's also his partisan, uh, to dissolve the assembly. Now, as the constitution of Pakistan is written and stands, a prime minister who's faced with a no confidence move uh, cannot dissolve the parliament. He has uh, many other executive uh, powers, but as the parliamentary uh, uh, convention and the written constitution goes, he just simply just cannot do that. But they went ahead and did it. Nonetheless, the uh, assemblies uh, were uh, dissolved by the uh, president who then also notified that Imran will stay as uh, an interim uh, type of uh, prime minister and uh, then a caretaker setup will be ushered in. Uh, on Sunday, uh, the Supreme Court of Pakistan uh, took cognizance of the issue on its own, a suomo to uh, power that uh, it has under uh, uh, constitutional authority, but did not adjudicate the case swiftly. It uh, decided to uh, push it to the next day and then again till today. And uh, as, as of uh, the last couple of hours, it uh, has still not decided the case. The opposition parties also approached the court uh, and the court has uh, put it off till tomorrow and uh, who knows until further. So this is sort of the uh, state of affairs and affairs of the state uh, um, as of uh, Tuesday afternoon uh, and night in Pakistan. So this is fascinating. So, so the things that I gather in this is that the, obviously, as far as um, my understanding as an outsider looking at this, as you were explaining, is that the army plays a significant role in the future, present and past of Pakistan. And the role of the army is, is very peculiar. Now, so this might again be a very naive question, but... So I, what went wrong with the army and Imran Khan? I mean, as you said, he was kind of propped up by the army. And so so is it because of bad economic decisions? So it literally boils down to something as simple as did the army is your friend only in good times. And if, as they say, you know, the muck hits the roof, uh, <laughs> the army says, Bhai palada jhaad lo, abhi, abhi inko nikalo, kind of. It, it's literally as simple as that or it is more, uh, more complicated that, Maybe Imran Khan wanted, as you mentioned, Imran Khan wanted to prop up his own person in, uh, to the top and, and the army simply cannot tolerate that. Then, But in a situation like that, then how does Pakistani society function or how does governance function? Then? Well, uh, in, in one word, uh, right now, everything is very, very dysfunctional. Uh, it's uh, on the verge of anarchy. Um, not quite there, but almost. Um, why uh, army decided to ditch Imran, if it did. Uh, there's still a big if about it, uh, because there is a, a section of opinion uh, which thinks that this, this is all an elaborate ruse, uh, where different sections of the army are sort of playing good cop, bad cop, uh, and duped uh, the opposition uh, into this whole process. Uh, but my take generally has been that, uh, uh, like I said before, uh, the economic realities were sinking in, and uh, the opposition leadership challenging army, uh, especially in, in uh, Punjab province, uh, uh, was not a, a tenable situation for the uh, army brass. Uh, uh, and Punjab is where their uh, bulk of the uh, um, rank and file and, and the officer class uh, comes from. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, Pakistan army over the years has been a, a very disciplined outfit. You can blame them for many things, but ill discipline is not one of those. Uh, I always say that uh, uh, the army uh, <laughs> thinking is that uh, the generals get to pick their favorite civilians, but civilians do not get to pick their generals. Uh, and that has uh, pretty much been the case over the years. Uh, this time around, when uh, Imran was creating a lobby of his own, at least this, this was the perception, uh, um, sections of the brass uh, and the general staff did not uh, like that part and um, essentially gave him a rap on the knuckles, but he would not back off from that. Uh, and even today, there is uh, a view that uh, General uh, Faz Hamid, who has been rotated out to uh, command the 11th Corps, uh, which is uh, <clears throat> uh, headquartered in my hometown, Peshawar, uh, he's uh, actually moving uh, various uh, levers that he had uh, previously uh, controlled as the uh, DGISI. And uh, many of the uh, things that we have seen, uh, including even the plot to 
uh, sort of uh, forestall uh, the no confidence move and uh, go uh, completely ultra ultra virus of the constitution that was uh, hatched by uh, uh, Imran's uh, party in uh, conjunction with sections of the army, uh, supportive of or led by uh, General Faiz Amid. I, I don't have any evidence to uh, um, support that view, but this is a perception. Uh, my, my view is still that uh, um, army um, decided to become, uh, uh, become neutral as it claimed, but technically you can't be neutral. If you were holding a building together with the scaffolding and uh, everything else, and you decide to take that away, this is not neutrality. You are essentially inducing the uh, building to fall. I called it a controlled demolition that army had tried this hybrid experiment and, and they have in the past also. Uh, whenever they uh, get an egg on their face, uh, uh, they bring in the civilians to uh, uh, clean their mess. Uh, and in fact, uh, always look for a fall guy. So uh, Imran was supposed to be a fall guy, but knowing Imran Khan to an extent uh, personally as well, and uh, obviously he has been in the public eye for the last 40 years, um, uh, he he's uh, quite a stubborn person, and uh, some of this was was expected uh, that he would go to the uh, um, extreme unconstitutional uh, um, side of the things. That is a bit of a, a, a shocking uh, or surprising. But then again, you know, uh, this is a person who uh, is almost a neo-fascist in his thinking a new, uh, a born again uh, Muslim who uh, keeps uh, harping back to the seventh century type of state model uh, where the emirs uh, ruled uh, semi-religious type of uh, entities. Uh, this is not totally unexpected, uh, even though it is quite shocking. Now, that's very interesting that you, you say, so... Is the role Imran Khan playing, as you said, of this new born again uh, religious person, is it more of a requirement because that's a reflection, otherwise you don't get politically elected, or it's a genuine change, or it's a bit of both? I I got a chance to see Imran Khan uh, fairly closely back uh, in 2006 and seven during the lawyers uh, movement. I was involved with that and uh, he was part of that. and. Uh, I sort of felt that uh, it is um, religious exhibitionism uh, that uh, Imran is using like many others uh, in the past uh, for political purposes. There may have been uh, some change of heart uh, where he went from a, a, a playboy uh, who one time was uh, <laughs> hanging out with uh, um, in, in Indian movie stars and uh, British socialites uh, going towards uh, a rosary bead in his hands and uh, a prayer mat uh, <laughs> under the arm. Um, but the public display of religion, the way he has done, uh, that is definitely a political use of religion. And uh, in his views also, uh, he, he has been very uh, supportive of, uh, the, for example, the Taliban uh, narrative over the years. Uh, in fact, he was uh, dubbed Taliban Khan by his uh, opponents, including myself. Uh, so it's it's a combination of factors, uh, and uh, he sits atop a party which is right of center, uh, and uh, uh, caters to uh, an increasingly, uh, um, um, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, conservative uh, society uh, in which religion still plays quite a bit of uh, a role. Uh, so so he found a handy tool uh, in his uh, born againism, and used it to the fullest. So it's 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 I guess it's a bl little bit of both. Uh, he yes. sees where the space is. The society is just seeing it. Okay, uh, the society is going there anyways. But now let's get back to the current state of affairs. So Dr. Taki, <laughs> I don't know. I'm listening to you. If he is clearly in violation of the constitutional procedure that has been set in, in Pakistan, what hope does the opposition have then as of now? Because if from whatever I've understood as of now, if the vote would have gone through, the opposition would have had the numbers, right? If yes. the vote would have gone through. Yes, they, they, they had 196 or 197 present. And uh, let me uh, clarify that uh, there is another rule uh, uh, to run the National Assembly in which there is a panel of speakers. 
Uh, and when mm -hmm. Imran Khan's man, a deputy speaker, when he left uh, um, after uh, proroguing the session, uh, one member of the opposition from that panel of speakers, he actually uh, got on the uh, uh, dais and he presided over a session and the opposition uh, went ahead and uh, did vote or uh, um, uh, complete voting on that uh, no confidence uh, resolution. Whether it is symbolic or whether it would have any uh, uh, legality to it, uh, that is to be seen, but the numbers were there. Uh, and the magic number is 172. Uh, I think the uh, the house strength is 334. So uh, uh, Imran clearly had lost uh, the majority. Uh, that that issue was there. So there is no question that opposition would have uh, uh, canned him. So so then then in in a scenario like this, obviously Punjab as a province plays a huge role in Pakistani politics. And uh, do you see the only solution to this quagmire? Because it is nothing less than a quagmire because, I mean, as you said, the courts are going to rule whatever they are going to rule. So how soon do you think re-elections can happen in Pakistan? Because the state on the street is from whatever I, I have read the news. So I'll give you this perspective. The news I read and the news I watch, whatever little we can track of what's happening in Pakistan is... Um, Imran Khan is trying to pin this as, I mean, the speech was very interesting, that Freudian slip, oh, I don't want to take the country kind of a thing. He first says America, then he says, oh, kisi mulk ne kaha hai, kind of a scenario. It was it was quite obviously deliberate, at least for a per, you know, person sitting and just watching TV, yaar, matlab, ye bada obvious tha, kind of a scenario. Mm -hmm. But now he's like, there is this, trope in, in Pakistani politics and Pakistani society, right? I mean, anti-Americanism, how, how much does anti-Americanism sell in the average Pakistani? Because he's clearly trying to, you know, get the people on the street and create some sort of uh, civil chaos. So, so what are the probabilities of then Pakistan just delving into civil war in that sense? Yes, I mean, we, we can have another discussion about anti-Americanism in Pakistan. It went from uh, being being the pet project of uh, the leftist uh, uh, political entities, of, of which I was a partisan once. Uh, and the slogan used to be, uh, America ka jo yaar hai, ghaddar hai, ghaddar hai. And then, uh, the, the, and back, back then, most of the religious uh, parties, the religious political parties, uh, were actually uh, fighting uh, America's uh, jihad against the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. So, uh, but now the, the shoe is on the other foot and uh, the religious parties uh, went that route. And uh, uh, over the past uh, uh, 20 years or so, Imran Khan positioned himself uh, as a pro-Taliban, anti-America uh, uh, type leader, even though when he came to uh, meet Mr. Trump, uh, and went back home, he claimed uh, to aise lag hai, maine World Cup dubara cheat kiya hai. So that's, that's his words. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's uh, um, um, America is the easy pinata uh, that everyone wants to whack. Uh, in fact, there is, uh, there is quite an industry uh, that sells the American flags uh, to be burnt on the street uh, during protests. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it is. भाई अमेरिका का झंडा इतनी आसानी से कैसे मिल जाता है कि पेशावर लाहौर किसी भी सड़क पे उसको लाके जला दो तो वो कहीं तो बन रहा है जिसको लाके तो न्यूयॉर्क टाइम्स एक्चुअली डिड अ स्टोरी ऑन दैट वन देयर देयर आर फ्यू पेडलर्स सो यस इट इज इट इज समथिंग व्हिच इज व्हिच फिट्स वेल विद द राइट विंग पॉपुलरिज्म एंड इमरान इज अ इज अ डेमोगॉग क्लियरली इन द मोल्ड ऑफ फैशिस्ट टाइप लीडर्स इन द पास्ट um, so yes, the the positioning is there, and then he actually went out and named the uh, State Department uh, official uh, who um, uh, had met with the Pakistani ambassador. But that was a routine meeting, and it wasn't just one meeting. There was two or three different meetings that that took place. Uh, America probably did express uh, its its concerns uh, about uh, Imran's position on various different things, uh, and and uh, that. Uh, silly move uh, going to Russia uh, on the eve of Ukrainian invasion that did not go well with anybody. Uh, so that was there. But, you know, if, if, if the United States was, was going to threaten uh, um, regime change or toppling him, they would not use uh, like a level three or four State Department functionary to convey that kind of message. 
uh, we all remember Richard Armitage uh, uh, and, and Colin Powell making the phone call to Pervez Musharraf. Uh, Imran is not half as powerful as uh, Pervez Musharraf was at that time. So if America wanted to do it, they, they would have done it. I, I don't put it beyond that. There have been uh, uh, regime changes in the world from Mossadegh onwards to attempts to uh, get rid of Fidel Castro. But uh, this is not, not how they go about doing it. Uh, this was a very easy uh, route that Imran took and uh, basically pinned it on the opposition. Uh, 197 members of the opposition, uh, parliamentarians, not even common people, uh, smeared as traitors in one broad brush without a shred of uh, evidence. So this is uh, populism uh, in the extreme. Um, and, and he uh, is almost uh, uh, getting away with it. Your question was what would the, the courts do or could do? Uh, short answer is that uh, there, there are two uh, um, issues uh, in front of the court. One is the simple legality of what the uh, speaker and deputy speaker did and following that Imran and the president did. So in my view, and I'm not a constitutional or law expert, but uh, as a history watcher, they could uh, rule on the legality of uh, the matter without getting into the constitutionality of the matter. Uh, because in, in most parliamentary democracies and where uh, uh, there is separation of power, executive, judiciary and uh, parliament uh, are in three, three uh, lane highway or four lane highway, uh, each one wants to drive in their own lane uh, and uh, uh, judges should not be legislating from the bench or even taking cognizance of the parliamentary matters, but the legality is where they can rule. And uh, I just wrote an article uh, yesterday in which I cited a, a 1988 uh, case in which uh, there is uh, a Supreme Court uh, ruling. Uh, the the uh, 1988 assemblies in Pakistan uh, were dissolved by uh, General Ziaul Haq. Back then, there was a, a, a law on the book uh, called the Article 58 2 b under which the president could dissolve the assemblies. But uh, even uh, then, the court ruled that as illegal, th though they allowed for the new elections to go through for very peculiar and very circumstantial uh, uh, reasons. But I focused opinion, Tavo. Uh, the way it, it transpired was that uh, Zia dissolved the assembly somewhere in May 1988. Uh, then he perished in the air crash in August 1988. After his crash, some people from the opposition party or something, they approached the Lahore High Court uh, to restore the assemblies. Uh, and the assemblies apparently were restored. Uh, the Federation went to appeal in, in October or so. The next election was slotted for November 1988. And uh, um, Zia's assemblies, were non-partisan assemblies. He had done a apolitical type of assembly. And the next election was going to be a multi-party uh, election. And uh, the Supreme Court held this view that even though his action was illegal and we acknowledge that, we are not going to reverse the process because the country is moving from martial law to democracy and from, from a, a party-less uh, national assembly towards multi-party uh, democracy. So very peculiar circumstances, but it did happen that it was on the book. Then once again in 1993, uh, Nawaz Sharif was dismissed by the then president, Ghulam Sarkhan, Khan, and the assemblies were restored uh, and, and the decision was declared uh, illegal. Uh, after the restoration, uh, uh, Nawaz Sharif and Ghulam Sarkhan Khan, they locked horns and the army chief jumped in and got rid of both of them at that time. So there are legal precedents which can be followed. Uh, now, as, uh, as a narrative uh, is being built among the media and, and uh, many people that, well, too much water has uh, flown under the bridge since Sunday. Are bhai, 48 hours have been so So court still has a lot of uh, uh, room to uh, decide upon it, at least on the legality of it, and declare it uh, null and void uh, ab initio. Uh, restore status quo ante uh, jo ke uh, sunday morning ko jo kuch tha wahan se dobara usko shuru kare usme jo problem hai which i foresee is that if imran has uh, strong backers uh, they have probably given assurances to him and perhaps even the judges if they were to give it uh, some manner of uh, a legal cover uh, because if they don't then what he has done uh, is not just illegal it could uh, actually fall under uh, subverting the constitution for which a high treason charge could be brought against them. 
and that by itself would be a very very ominous development so i i i have a feeling that the, the court might decide to take that 1988 route where they find a via media that what is done is done let's move forward uh, but even then they are not moving very swiftly i mean uh, almost uh, 72 uh, hours on uh, they still have not decided though they do have the power to do it and another thing they did not do was opposition parties requested uh, Uh, that um, uh, you should for, um, uh, form a full bench of the court but they went with a five member bench in which one of the uh, second senior most judges is not included because he's considered uh, uh, um, quite a bit of an independent mind and uh, uh, not someone who throws uh, the establishments military establishments uh, or the uh, judicial establishments line so uh, that's kind of where we stand now So that's very interesting. So in a scenario like this, I remember you had written, uh, I think, Satais November ko apne likha tha Nawaz Sharif uh, wala. If I remember, you know, <laughs> you had written then. So what's happening? So so I'm keen. So where does this leave Nawaz Sharif or the political outfit? And like, what's his future then in in this uh, entire fiasco? If I was to call it one. Yeah, I mean, if you ask, I think we'll have to come up with a new term for whatever is happening there. Uh, this is, <laughs> this is, you know, the kind of <laughs> sorry for lack of a better term, the Charlie Fox trot. Uh, this is uh, insane. Uh, really, it is insane. Uh, people uh, ask us, "Boy, your prediction is wrong." अरे भाई प्रोडिक्शन जो है वो कुछ uh, कानून uh, आईन uh, uh, के मुताबिक किया जाता है कुछ रैशनैलिटी फैक्टर होती है यू नो सम डिसाइडेड टू गो कम्प्लीटली इेशनल एंड कम्प्लीटली इलीगल इट्स सो गोइंग टू नवाज शरीफ आई थिंक विद इन दिन देर हैव बिन टू व्यूज ऑल अलॉन्ग नवाज शरीफ व्यू हैज बिन दैट यू हैव टू एनर्जाइज योर बेस uh mobilize the street build a narrative that goes after both uh, imran khan and his uh, uh, army patrons uh, but within his own party and in other political parties for example within his own party his younger brother shahbaz sharif who is a former uh, chief minister of punjab and aspirant for uh, uh, prime minister at this time uh, he is of the view that no we need to uh, uh, do it the old fashioned way where we sort of uh, uh la the army's fears ke uh, there won't be any repercussion against the generals if we come to power we would respect whatever your domain is and you give us a little bit of wiggle room and uh, we can uh, move on and not uh, um, go back to the 2018 time um, where where we were at logger heads uh, similarly pakistan people's party uh, uh, led by asif ali zardari his view is very similar to shahbaz sharif and they have been the, the two who had actually put together this uh no confidence uh, move and uh, sort of uh, uh sought and received assurance from the army that it would remain neutral so opposition uh, has a chance but uh, for a political narrative uh, you have to have matching political legwork uh, organizational legwork uh, street mobilization uh, that is still lacking um, after 48 hours you have not heard uh, a lot of clarity from uh, um, nawaz sharif's party for example even though in in uh, people's party benazir's son uh, bilawal bhutto uh, he came out uh, quite clearly and uh, i like his opinion uh, when asked that if supreme court decides uh, to go to uh, to the elections that you should go to the elections what is your he was i think it, this is such a flagrant disregard of the constitution and such uh, gross illegality that Uh, there is no way that uh, supreme court won't undo this so you know there has to be a, a, a manner of uh, uh, moral uh, pressure uh, that needs to be on the supreme court as well that if you if you do something like this and leave this uh, mutation uh, and uh, virulence in the body politic in the constitutional history without undoing it you know this uh, uh, this poison will remain uh, so a uh, position has to uh, really uh, sort of come out of its slumber uh, my own view is that nawaz sharif cannot remain out of uh, this situation he will have to uh, um, make himself heard uh, he can probably not just let his brother do the uh, hobnobbing type of politics that he has been doing uh, clearly uh, um, it has not uh, worked 
um, and we are we are uh, in a situation where the opposition is is in quite a pickle. Imran uh, thinks that he has um, succeeded and can actually get away with it. So, but as far as uh, I have understood, or whatever little I have understood, is like Nawaz Sharif has gone. His relations have, in a way, gone sour with the armed forces. So, the armed forces of Pakistan. Like, this is what I'm not able to understand. Like, they things went sour with Nawaz Sharif. They prop up Imran Khan. <laughs> now things go sour with Imran Khan. Who the hell are they going to prop up then? Because they they they, they went sour with him. Nawaz Sharif too, right? Yes. So, and this this is uh, sort of uh, back to the future or uh, back to the history. Uh, back in back in 1990s, we had this kind of situation, and it was called the uh, political musical chairs. Uh, uh, back then, uh, Pakistan Army thought, uh, not thought, said that uh, Benazir Bhutto is the security risk uh, because she's a, a secular uh, liberal pop- uh, popular leader who's uh, soft on uh, India. Uh, those kind of things, and uh, Nawaz Sharif back then was uh, their their favorite man. Uh, and when Benazir was uh, uh, toppled uh, in 1989, early early 1990, I, I think, uh, just about two years in the office, uh, Nawaz Sharif replaced her. Then uh, Nawaz Sharif uh, locked on with the uh, then president, and army uh, got rid of him. Uh, then Nawaz Sharif. After that, developed this streak where he wanted to assert uh, civilian uh, preeminence and has been fairly consistent in that. Uh, in his uh, second term, uh, I believe it was the second term, when he got into the office 1997 and in 1999, uh, Kargil happens and after that, uh, uh, he fires Musharraf and Musharraf stages the coup. So there's a lot of bad blood. But then again, uh, you know, these these are the uh, players on the chessboard. Uh, Army could not wish them away. Uh, Nawaz Sharif ran uh, a pretty reasonably functioning uh, government. The economy was doing fairly well, if not uh, really, um, you know, um, jumping leaps and bounds. Uh, but uh, inflation was was low. GDP was above uh, five and a half or six um, dollar um, dollar to rupee parity was holding steady. Uh, pe- people uh, were relatively uh, prosperous uh, at that time. Uh, so he uh, kept his base intact. Uh, um, the army could not pry away uh, any of his party members or at least not his leading party members over the last uh, um, five years, six years that they have been trying to. So uh, he's a force to contend with. Uh, now, uh, the flip side is that uh, he sits atop uh, a, a party which has a, a, a large urban base following in the uh, mercantile and trader class and so on, and not exactly a revolutionary party or not even a populist party, so to speak. Uh, so mobilizing the street was not quite the thing that they were used to doing, even though they did it fairly successfully, especially his daughter, who's uh, quite a crowd puller. Uh, uh, and also uh, when she also went after the uh, the junta all guns blazing and and really uh, got accolades for that um, so they could pull it off but then uh, you know uh, to to an extent they have uh, pressures from within their party other constraints um, i feel that uh, nawaz sharif was um, asked to restrain himself not just by others but by people within his own party because they felt that that would uh, sort of um, push the army towards uh, um, hugging Imran Khan even more tightly. Uh, And army might not be willing to let go of uh, this hybrid project at all. Uh, But then now uh, we are are, uh, in in a different territory compared to where we were back when uh, Nawaz Sharif was uh, naming names, uh, not too far from uh, Bajwa's General Bajwa's hometown. Uh, so I, I think some something of that sort would would have to come back. Uh, this all um, good cop routine is probably not going to work for uh, the opposition. They they have to uh, uh, put uh, army judiciary uh, on notice that uh, if this uh, morass is not resolved and cleaned up uh, swiftly. Uh, there, there is going to be a mobilization. And, uh, you know, political process, people uh, always keep talking about everything in the parliament. You went to the parliament and where, 
you're being stonewalled and, and somebody does something like this. Actually, uh, one of the uh, uh, Sindh High Court Bar Association president said in the uh, Supreme Court today that uh, the last instance where they found where a speaker disallowed or would not let voting on a no confidence motion was in 1993 uh, Germany. So, so we are we are uh, in the Nazi territory right now. Uh, this is this is dangerous stuff. Uh, so opposition will have to uh, uh, enunciate and, and formulate his, its narrative clearly, but then also back it up with political legwork. Leg There's no shortcut to political proficiency. You have to do the hard work. You have to do the heavy lifting. Uh, opinion writers, uh, commentators, podcasts, we, we can only contribute so much. Uh, but it is a, a political problem and it has to be resolved by political people. Uh, I'm not saying it is going to happen or it will happen or should happen. Uh, what are the probabilities of the army going? All of you suck. None of you are capable. You keep throwing muck at each other. Here's my chance. I'm taking over again, literally. I, I think uh, if, if they could do something like that, they would have done it by now. Um, it does seem that uh, they are restrained, not just uh, because they don't want to do it. Uh, right now, the situation is that uh, they have uh, they have already faced a lot of flack inside, especially in Punjab. I keep saying Punjab because that uh, army is Punjab. Punjab is the army uh, for all practical purposes. Indeed, there are uh, many Pashtuns and now some other sections as well. But that's uh, where where the uh, <clears throat> the, the the real uh, recruitment area is. Um, the international situation, the way it is, uh, is, is probably not conducive to a martial law. Pakistan is uh, on a IMF uh, lifeline. Uh, it has very uh, uh, precarious relations, even with its former patrons, uh, such as uh, Saudi Arabia. If Saudi Arabia gave Pakistan a, a billion dollar or three dollar facility on extremely tight terms, uh, almost insulting terms. Uh, so there are power levers around the world which could be pushed if uh, it is uh, it is seen that there is an overt uh, uh, naked martial law. And I, and I think that's why they designed this hybrid regime that uh, martial laws uh, at, at the present time in 21st century, uh, third decade, uh, probably not possible. It, it, it can happen. Uh, never say never again, but uh, seems unlikely. Seems unlikely. If, if there is a street chaos, that kind of situation arises, yes, there is a potential for a for a limited type of intervention that one can imagine, but uh, overtly coming and taking over, and especially an army chief doing it, uh, it uh, in his second term when he's uh, on um, on an extension already has already been smeared. I mean, uh, he has been publicly called names names in the pro protest. That had uh, that had not happened before. I've watched uh, uh, politics since Zaul Haq's time. Zaul Haq and Musharraf, unko gali padti thi, lekin wo to martial law administrator the, open dictators the. Army chiefs were scolded, but not the the way Bajwa has has faced. This is probably the first time a sitting army chief was scolded like that by common people in Punjab. Or jage pe to hota tha, lekin Punjab mein this was a new thing. So I I think there are factors, and going back to that that. Uh, theory about image and reality. Army does uh, uh, get very concerned about its uh, its image. My feeling is that they won't do it. Can they do it? Yes, they have the wherewithal to do it in a heartbeat. Uh, and, and probably there might not be a, a whole lot of protests instantly, but uh, it, in the uh, short term, medium term, long range, it, it's going to be disastrous for them and the country. Yeah, because I was just wondering the way you explained the whole constitutional process being completely obliterated by Imran Khan and his government and then the way the president has supported it. And I mean, assuming the courts also allow it, don't you think there is a precedent then for the army that you guys have literally violated the constitution and they just come in then? Yes. Yeah, the, the, that's how the 1950s, 60s, uh, 70s uh, um, martial laws, uh, they came about. Uh, civilians were bickering with, with each other. Uh, in, in fact, uh, uh, back in 1977, 
uh, the opposition parties, there were nine of them, which was a uh, hodgepodge of um, religious and leftist parties. They were uh, protesting against uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. Uh, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto had tried uh, quite illegally uh, uh, and toppled uh, two elected governments of National Army Party, which was a socialist leftist party in Balochistan. And uh, uh, back then it was called North West Frontier, the present day Pashtunkhwa and formed uh, cases against the leadership, uh, treason cases, not quite unlike what is happening now. And the army eventually did intervene. Uh, but then again, ground realities were very different. Uh, this type of dynamic wasn't there. Right now, it, it is sort of a multiplayer chessboard. Uh, they, they can certainly make that move, uh, but there will be consequences for them. There will be domestic consequences and there will be a lot of international consequences for them. And I, and I think that they are cognizant of that. Uh, and, and the restraint might not be out of the, the goodness of their heart, but because they are not able to sustain anything like that. So on a lighter note, uh, Dr. Taki, Imran Khan has been a real source of entertainment for a lot of people in Pakistan. <laughs> whether is, they are his opponents or whether they are his supporters. So yeah. Uh, Imran Khan ने बड़ी entertainment की है तो मतलब क्या withdrawal symptoms होने वाले अभी लोग Imran Khan is going देखें हम तो अमेरिका में बैठे हैं हमको तो ये दूसरा withdrawal होएगा ना पहले जो है वो President Trump की entertainment बंद हो गई Twitter ने भी उसको ban <laughs> कर दिया अब हमें ये दूसरा loss हो जाएगा तो uh, comic relief कहाँ से मिलेगी uh, you know and uh, as, as as a medical professional I always say medicine uh, laughter is the best medicine <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was just looking at his, you know, entire trip of Russia. Actually, I have to ask you, so maybe this is my last question and we can wrap up uh, analyzing his trip. I mean, what was he doing there? What was he doing there? I mean, I was sitting in India, I always try to do this. I, I try to keep my Indian biases aside and I just look at it as a person. He's like, but if anyone sees there, that person has gone there, what's going on? You see, uh, he in his mind, he was trying to uh, emulate Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. And I think uh, this whole thing was uh, weighing uh, on his mind, um, even though it, uh, you asked it, it uh, jocularly. But the reality is, uh, he knows that he's an upstart. कारपेट uh, बैगर को अपनी हैसियत का अंदाजा है वो बनना भुट्टो चाहता है जो भुट्टो साहब uh, के साथ हमारा सियासी इख्तिलाफ है लेकिन वो बड़े आदमी थे हिज थॉट प्रोसेस हिज इंटरनेशनल स्टैंडिंग वाज क्वाइट समथिंग टू बिहोल्ड व्हाट इमरान वाज ट्राइंग टू डू वाज लुक लाइक एन इंटरनेशनल लीडर व्हेन ही हैड प्रॉब्लम्स एट होम ही वांटेड टू लुक टॉल एंड बिग बाय स्टैंडिंग ऑन पुटिन्स शोल्डर्स after he was spurned by uh, America, Biden was not calling him. Uh, even the Secretary of State was not calling uh, uh, the foreign minister. And in fact, that's what that discussion was about, where the undersecretary or assistant secretary, he met the uh, Pakistani ambassador. So that's what it was all about. And uh, even though uh, it was in the air that the Russian uh, invasion is imminent, in his infinite wisdom, he decided to go there and be seen as an accomplice or, or uh, hanging on to Putin's uh, coattail the night before so uh, that's that's what it is really he uh, he tries these things uh, from ek to ye ke wo bahut half baked uh, superficial kisam ka aadmi hai imran khan maine unke sath do teen lambi sittings ki hain usse andaaza hota hai ki padha likha unhone kuch nahi hai wo kanche khelte rahe hain zyada waqt theek hai acche acche khiladi the Lekin, uh, once he got into politics, you know, people uh, learn on the job. He has not. People develop some depth. He has not. Uh, any issue, you take it, and then he is so obsessed with himself. I mean, uh, he, the, the, the uh, narcissism is uh, such that, uh, that after every speech, uh, um, media actually counts the time that he said, uh, me, mine, I. Har takreer ke andar ko 200 dafa to wo apna zikr karte hain. Uh, the man never says that, and that started with the 1992 World Cup, and he held the the cup up, uh, never mentioned the team once. It was all about him. So, वो दूला दोलन बाजा बारात सब कुछ खुद बनना चाहते हैं. मसला यही है. So, 
सही बात है इट डज लुक लाइक इट एट टाइम्स एंड एंड आई डू रिमेम्बर द नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू वर्ल्ड कप स्पीच एक फिर पार्टिंग ये डिस्कशन करते हैं पाकिस्तान में तकी साहब पी सी बी का जो चेयरमैन होता है वो तो मतलब वजीर आजम उसको अपॉइंट करता है तो यहाँ पे तो वजीर आजम की विकेट गिरने वाली है तो बेचारे हमारे रमीज राजा साहब जो अभी अभी <laughs> मसा मसा आए हैं तो उनका क्या हाल होने वाला है <laughs> वो इनके बहुत पार्टिजन है वो तो ऐसे मोदबाना इनके दरबार में हाजिरी देते हैं जैसे अकबर आजम के दरबार में कोई आया हो सवाल ही बैठ अपने मसला लेकर आई थिंक ही हैज दैट दैट लॉबी इन इन स्पोर्ट्समैन एंड आर्टिस्ट एंड वट नॉट एंड एंड मेनी ऑफ देम आर एज सुपरफिशल पीपल एज ही एज uh like dissolves like and he he carries them along or uh, there's a lot of schmoozing and what not i think uh his goose is cooked his political goose is cooked uh he may survive this um, but he will he will go down in history as some sort of a oliver cromwell uh, um, worse than military dictators in pakistan um he can he can Flawed on for a little bit, लेकिन ये जो चीज उसने की है ये tenable नहीं है ये he has tried to uh, poison the constitutional well. Uh, this is not going to go down in history um, in 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 any uh, good words. लेकिन इसका immediate aftermath भी निकलेगा. It's इतनी ज़्यादा friction और rift और wedges जो हैं ये polity society बर्दाश्त नहीं कर सकती. Pakistan is a complex country. It's it's a federation. Uh, Uh, in which there is uh, four or five uh, um, <clears throat> geographical entities with long histories that antedate uh, pakistan itself so uh, you know you you don't rule a complex country like that uh, with such superficial and uh, careless callous uh, attitude towards constitution agar federalism us constitution mein se nikal jaye to bahut bade masle paida ho jayenge fair enough dr taki i think uh, uh... The the only way we can end this podcast is by saying they आगे आगे देखते होता है क्या because uh, uh, I have to say sitting in India it has been quite an entertaining <laughs> last few days just watching what's happening. जी जब इमरान खान शायद seventy eight seventy nine की वो वो series थी या क्या था India में खेल रहे थे तो बार बार इनकी back खराब हो जाती थी हर वक्त वो छुट्टी पर होते थे तो पाकिस्तान के एक एक humorist हैं अनवर मकसूद उन्होंने कहा था कि अल्लाह पाकिस्तान की team की जीनत को अपनी अमान में रखे तो इसी दुआ पे खत्म कर देते हैं हम बिल्कुल बिल्कुल डॉक्टर तकी थैंक्स अलॉट फॉर कमिंग ऑन द पॉडकास्ट इट वॉज अलेजर टॉकिंग टू यूट प्लेजर खुशाम थैंक यू सो मच फॉर है All right, guys. We'll wrap today's discussion up. So, before wrapping it up, I just want to tell everyone in the description of the podcast, whether you're listening to the audio version or whether you're watching this video version, you can find Dr. Taki's Twitter handle, and also I will attach his Muckrack handle account, where you can go and read everything that he has written over the time. Because Muckrack is very convenient; it just grabs everything that a person has written and puts it in one place, so that way you get the whole thing. Uh, and if you like what i'm doing over here you know the drill please subscribe to the channel like the video leave a comment below you can also become a member on youtube or a subscriber on patreon and you can buy the chartwork podcast merch or send your donations to upi i will see you guys next time until then take care bye